Today, our State of the City address will be delivered by Mayor Mark Santoro. Mark was elected in 2008 to fill a partial two-year term and re-elected in 2009. Mark has a PhD in electrical engineering from Stanford and has worked for Apple and Sun Microsystems. Currently, Mark is also the CEO of his own company that designs software computer chips. It's my great pleasure to introduce you, Mayor Mark Santoro. Thank you. I, I guess you already know I'm Mark Santoro. I'm the current mayor of Cupertino. And Welcome to the uh, State of the City 2012. This is the part Rick was going to put in the fireworks, but I, I guess we didn't have the money for that. We're conservative. So anyway, um, I like to be to the point. So I'm going to save you all the suspense, and I'm going to let you know that the state of Cupertino is good. <laughs> that pretty much is my talk. And uh, <laughs> thank you for coming. Okay, so some of you are still eating, and, and staff did tell me that was a little bit too short, so I realize I can also bring up my fellow council members and introduce them. So I'd like to bring up Vice Mayor Orrin Mahoney, Council Member Gilbert Wong, Council Member uh, Barry Chang, and our newest Council Member Rod Sinks, and have them stand up here. Um, <clears throat> so, so that didn't take long enough, so somebody suggested I play the guitar or uh, sing or dance, and uh, I, I hurt my fingers, I can't play the guitar, and trust me, you don't want to hear me sing, and I'm not about to dance in front of you. So one of my council members, who should remain nameless for the point in time, said, why don't you juggle? Because at a event, uh, training session one time, somebody tried to juggle. It's been about 15 years, but since I couldn't do the other, we're going to try this. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have your ball? You got the ball? OK. No, not yet. Okay, so anyway, juggling is kind of, I guess, a reasonable skill for a mayor to have, because you're always juggling lots of things. Sometimes you're trying to keep certain things in the air while keeping an eye on something else. So, however, I think the most important thing with being able to juggle when you're the mayor is making sure that someone's got your back. Thank you. So can I have it? See, the other thing council members do is they give you extra things to do, I guess, but it's, it's been a while, so I'm going to stop there, and thanks for the help. <laughs> okay, I, I see by my watch I've got to fill a little more time. So, um, so not only is the state of the city good, but Cupertino is a great place to live in. I know all of us that live here love it, and... and um, we're going to run a little video that the staff is prepared to show you just how wonderful a place it is here in Cupertino. This is Cupertino, California. Where farmers once planted acres of crops and where today the fertile ground lies at the heart of the Silicon Valley. Cupertino is centrally located in the Bay Area with easy access to award-winning wineries, majestic mountains, and the breathtaking ocean that makes Cupertino a quintessential destination. The city of Cupertino is the international headquarters of high-tech industry giants Apple Inc., Seagate, and home to Packetier and more than 60 other high-tech firms. Cupertino's 58,302 residents are diverse, progressive, and engage in a community known for its award-winning public school system, well-maintained parks and neighborhoods, and unmatched quality of life. Cupertino's unique blend of high-tech companies and family-friendly neighborhoods make it a popular spot for work and play. The city offers a bounty of leisure activities, hiking in nearby open space preserves, attending outdoor concerts and festivals, wine tasting, golfing, and participating in thousands of city-sponsored recreational programs and classes for all ages. The 
Cupertino community is made up of residents from every part of the world drawn to the city by its job opportunities and outstanding public schools. Here, education is a strong community value. More than half of the residents hold college degrees, and the high school graduation rate at 95% is one of the highest in the country. In a city as rich in cultural diversity as Cupertino, it is no wonder that you can find restaurants here offering dishes originating from all over the globe. In addition to standout gems like Alexander's Steakhouse for some of the best steaks in the San Francisco Bay Area, Cupertino is home to many excellent Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and Vietnamese restaurants, as well as dining spots that feature superb Indian, Italian, Greek, and French cuisine. Fusion restaurants, many relying on fresh, locally grown California produce, are popular in this town where residents can dine out from an extraordinary menu of international fare every night of the week. From a robust agricultural district to a thriving Silicon Valley residential and high-tech center, the city of Cupertino has carefully developed and nurtured the community within its 11 square miles. Meticulously groomed neighborhoods, well-designed office and shopping complexes, and beautiful parks and open spaces are hallmarks of this vibrant city. A well-informed and diverse citizenry and an open, inclusive government are key components in keeping Cupertino the dynamic and progressive city that it is. With its strong community values and healthy economic base, the city of Cupertino will continue to move forward, enhancing innovative solutions, creating community partnerships, and continually exploring new ideas for a better tomorrow. Thank you, great video. <laughs> Makes you wish you lived there, doesn't it? So yes, the state of the city is good. It's a wonderful place to live. Uh, but not only does the video think so, our residents think so. In a recent survey, 95% of the residents love living in Cupertino. And not only do we know it, but Forbes knows it as well. Cupertino is ranked fifth on their list of towns to live well in. And we're gonna get even better. I hate being fifth, I'd rather be number one, so. Um, we're adding a lot of new things coming up. There's Main Street, which will give our residents their long wanted uh, downtown area. The Rose Bowl project, which uh, has broken ground now and hopefully will continue to march forward. Olmstead Shopping Center is being upgraded. The Crossroads Retail is also being upgraded. Things are just not sitting still in town. Cupertino Village is adding a couple new buildings and a parking structure. Uh, the little fruit company down the street is going to land something here at some point, rumor has it. Uh, Stevens Creek Trail has been, um, you know, renewed and restored. And also the creek itself has been restored. Um, if these pictures are actually of the creek after restoration, it looks like it's been there for 100 years. It's a phenomenally good job for anybody who hasn't been out to, to that area or looked at the creek or um, Blackberry Farm. And Cupertino is also financially strong. Um, we've had the luxury of not having our property values crater like most of the country, so our property tax revenues have remained fairly intact. Also, our businesses have been doing well, so our uh, sales tax revenue, retail revenue, has done quite well. What that means is we haven't had such a big hit in revenue in some areas, and therefore it's allowed us to keep um, our services up. So our expenditures have remained relatively intact. We've tightened our belt a little bit, and I must say the council was good about, in the city, about tightening the belt um, long before everyone else realized there was a problem coming to make sure that we kept our money in place. We're in a lot better shape than our surrounding cities. Gilroy's lost 71 city workers. Santa Clara lost more than 100. Los Gatos lost 8% of their workforce. Cupertino has lost zero city workers. We've maintained our level of services that our residents have come to expect and I think deserve. Um, our budget has been balanced throughout and we've managed to maintain our general fund reserves of over $14 million. <clears throat> Having said that, before I go on, I, I, I know about you guys, but the financial stuff kind of a little weary on me, so I thought I'd do something else. <laughs> You know, Cupertino, we have people from all around the world. 
But we're not just sleeping, we're actively busy. We're centered here in the cradle of Silicon Valley, <laughs> and we're a real shooting star. <laughs> we're not just sleeping, we do have minor, minor issues like what to do with our dogs. <laughs> But at the end of the day, even though our residents travel all around the world trying to do business and good and better things, we all know that we go home to Cupertino. I thought the yo-yo thing went well with the next group, which is their schools. <laughs> even though I, Ward Winter might have gotten me in trouble if he saw me doing that class. But anyway, uh, so now you know how I spent my youth. Uh, so, we also have some of the best schools in the country. Our uh, elementary schools are the 10th highest performing district in the state with an average API scores of a phenomenal 955. They've received numerous awards. Our high schools are no slouches either. Every single Cupertino High School is on uh, Newsweek Magazine's list of top high schools in the nation, every one. And 77% of our students, when they graduate, go immediately to college. Just a phenomenally good record. They do other things as well. For those of you who don't know, our local homestead band played in the Macy's Day Parade. They were one of only 10 schools selected to play in that parade. So it's a phenomenal uh, honor, and you should hear them sometime. They're, they're, they're very impressive. Or you should go back and look on YouTube and find a video of the parade. One other thing I'm going to mention, um, we gave this young lady an award the other day. Angela Jung is the winner of the Siemens uh, Scholarship for um, Math, Science, and Technology. This is a national competition. There were thousands of kids that participated. She came in first, number one. What she did was quite incredible. Um, she's only 17. She's a senior at Monta Vista. She got the ability to do some research also at Stanford, and she's developed what may turn out to be a new cure for cancer, believe it or not. Um, she's combined a gold molecule with um, some iron oxide, managed to attach a drug to it, and then have it delivered to the site where it can actually glom onto the stem cells in the cancer, the cancer stem cells, and then by hitting it with a light, it releases the medicine. And so it's worked phenomenally well in early tests, and it's just an amazing thing. It's just, whenever I look at our youth in this town, I, I think we're in good hands. So our, our schools are just amazingly good. Unfortunately, even in a great place, um, bad things can happen. Um, last year, the city lost two of our own employees, John Records and Robert Hook. Um, we had some issues with some gas lines in town. And uh, we had a, a shooting at uh, nearby Cupertino, a cement plant. I want to stress that who's got this wrong. The shooting was not in Cupertino. It was in Santa Clara County. Sorry for those in the county. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the later potential car hijacking also was not in Cupertino. It was in Sunnyvale. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I want to commend our, um, our law enforcement uh, for the way they handled it. The community, the law enforcement, the emergency people all came together and just did a phenomenal good job of handling the situation. Certainly could have been a lot worse. Um, finally, um, we lost one of our own, Steve Jobs, um, who, as you all you know, found an Apple computer. And if you don't know, he went to our local Cupertino schools. And um, it's such a great loss that uh, we put together this little tribute to Steve Jobs that we're going to show you now. And as you know, we've always been in Cupertino. Started in a little office park. and eventually got the buildings we are in now at the corner of De Anza and 280. So we are now you know, we have this great campus down near 280, but we are in 30 other buildings now. I mean, we got, we've rented every scrap of building we can find in Cupertino and, to put our people, and they just keep getting further and further away from the campus. But after looking at a lot of things, we found something in Cupertino 
that was a possibility. It was more expensive, a lot more expensive than we could get elsewhere, but it was something where uh, we could stay in the area that we like the best. So I, I want to say thank you to Steve Jobs personally. Um, it was a wonderful company to work for many years ago. Um, I still love the products. I'm happy I've got one sitting right here that I'm cheating from. So um, in our community, lots of people have lots of requests. You know, can we have this? Can we have that? What do you guys think? And one of the important things that the city council does is try to um, uh, provide what our residents want and need. So I thought I'd talk about now, so there's a lot bigger list than this, but some of the things the council's done in the last few years um, uh, have approved and helped happen in the community. Uh, the first thing we were asked for was additional library hours. The council has not only in the last three years kept the additional library hours open, but last year we even voted to increase the number of hours in the library. So I'm gonna give us a check mark for that. I think we succeeded very well. Um, the library fountains were um, shut down by the county temporarily. We had to retrofit them and spend a lot of money on them. And I must say that it's not as exciting right now, but when summer comes, the fountains are back on. So I think we got a check mark for that one. Um, traffic congestion around the schools has been an ongoing problem. And there's quite a few things that have been done to uh, address traffic congestion. Um, when I first got on the council, people said, don't even try. It just keeps getting worse and there's nothing you can do. But the council has actually added new crossing guards and striping. We started the work bike, walk, bike, carpool to school program, uh, which out of that came the now famous WOW, Walk One Week program. And uh, it's clear to me that Shali's better at acronyms than I am, because nobody remembers WBC, but everybody remembers WOW. So that's why we put the teens on that. Um, there's RFID tag system at Lincoln and Kennedy to monitor bicycles they come and go. And we've been declared a uh, bike friendly community and safe routes to school programs. Um, however, notice I didn't give us a check on this one. That's because it's gotten better in the last few years, but certainly there's still more work to be done. So I think we're going to continue working on that and try to make it even better. Um, next, Blackberry Farm was renovated. You see the new pool slide here. So that turned out marvelously well for any of you that haven't been there. Uh, and as I mentioned before, the creek uh, restoration has done. Fine job on that. It's a beautiful area. Um, and we bought a couple lots over in the uh, Rancho Rinconada neighborhood and built Sterling Barnhard Park. And this is a picture of Sterling Barnhard Park, which is now complete. So a neighborhood that didn't have a park before now has a park. So that one's checked. Uh, we provided an access path through Scenic Circle for kids to have a safer route to school. So they can go through there. And I talked to some people the other day and they said a lot of kids are using that to get to school. So give us a check for that. Um, we've also been asked to fix the roads. And uh, this is an ongoing thing, but you should know that the council has increased funding for road repairs that the city spends on road repairs every year for the past three years. The other thing we did is, um, for those, anybody doesn't know, my big thing is open and transparent government. We've actually put a list on the Cupertino website. It's at uh, cupertino.org slash roads. You can go there and you can see a rating of every single road in the city. So if you think your roads tore up, you can see how it compares to other roads in the city, which will give you an idea of how far down the, the list it is to be fixed. So they're all done scientifically and they're all listed there for everyone to see. So nothing is hidden from anyone. So continuing on with that transparent government thing, um, I believe government needs to be for its people. And to be for your people, your people have to know what you're doing. So we put a lot of effort here in Cupertino into making things more transparent. Um, I've noticed in the last year, I, th I think that the community as a whole seems to be much more favorable towards the um, city staff. And I think part of that is just they know more about what's going on, and that tends to ensue more trust. Now, relative to the council, that's hard to say, but you know, elected officials, so um, what can you do? Uh, a, little, a, little, a little concern over your government is always a healthy thing, I think. But government certainly owes it to the residents to tell you what you're doing. So we've added some, uh, a lot of ways to communicate with City Hall. You can see there's old fashioned ones like walk in, talk to people, it's always a good one, use the telephone. There's also a lot of new things. One that's just been brought online is called Ready95014. It's an app that runs on, guess what, iPhones and iPads. And if you um, happen to uh, have an emergency, if you load that app, it'll tell you what to do in case of that emergency. Now, 
things are getting better. They weren't always perfect. In fact, when I first got on the council, we had an abysmal um, data rate coming out of C City Hall. If anyone tried five years ago to download a council packet, it was very difficult, very time consuming. So we've now upgraded the bandwidth into the city by 10x. And um, things are better, there's a lot less complaints, but I still think we need to do better than that. I think there's streaming videos, there's packets, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be downloaded. So I've been working with staff and they have uh, now have a request out for a quote to increase that bandwidth another 10x. So at that point, we'll, we should have over 100 megabits per second, which should be sufficient at least for the next couple of years for um, our residents. Finally, I'd like to kind of uh, wrap up by introducing three new things. Um, the first of which you all mostly know about by now is called Meet Mayor Mark. So it's going to be on Wednesday following the first council meeting of the month. So first council meeting is the first Tuesday. So that Wednesday following that council meeting from 4 to 5.30 in City Hall in the OC room, I'll be there. Hopefully I'll remember to bring some drinks or cookies or something. And anybody who wants to come is welcome to come and sit down. It's very informal. You don't have to get dressed up. I certainly won't be looking like this. And uh, we'll just sit down and talk. And we can go over whatever's on your mind. I'll have you answer any questions or explain anything you'd like to know about the city. The, uh, the next thing I'd like to talk about are businesses in Cupertino. We have a lot of them. And I think they can use our help. Can we roll the video? So what you see here is a list of business li people that have business licenses in Cupertino. Now you're going to notice this list starts speeding up. And the reason it's speeding up is if we ran it at a speed where you could read all of them, we would be here for a really long time. And you all know how I like to not talk for too long. So we sped the list up to roll by. And it turns out this is only a partial list. This doesn't even include some more 1,000 names. doesn't even include the 1,000 home-based businesses plus in Cupertino. So we have a lot of businesses in Cupertino, a lot. There we go. And we're going to do some things to help them. The first thing has already fallen into place. Um, this is a, a slide from the, our school's DECA club. And there's a program called At Cupertino. And At Cupertino is being put on by the uh, Chamber of Commerce and Valco Shopping Mall. And what it is is on February 10th through 12th, you can actually, um, sorry about that, you can actually show up uh, and, and, uh, to Valco or um, the marketplace and get big discounts. In fact, here's a list of the discounts and you see they're fairly substantial. So this is to get people more aware of some of our Cupertino businesses and so I hope you all go and bring your friends and then once you try these places out you'll continue to use them. The next thing that we're going to do is a small business workshop. And John Zarelli who's, where'd you go John? He's hidden. There he is. So, so John, who's this year's president of the Chamber of Commerce, has graciously volunteered uh, himself and the Chamber to help put on this workshop for small businesses. And the goal with this is, is to bring together everyone who wants to show up, but especially those of you who are involved in small businesses, to get together for one day workshop. And the point of this workshop is to hash out ideas where either the Chamber or the city or other small businesses can help each other. So the goal of this is to help our small businesses do better. And so it's just a workshop to run a bunch of ideas by to try to give us some better ideas. There's certainly the Chamber has done things, the city's done things, but I think there's some more good ideas coming out. And that will be held um, Tuesday, May 29th from 12 to 4 in uh, Community Hall. So um, hopefully a lot of you small business people, there's a thousand of you, a couple thousand of you, hopefully many of you can attend. Finally, um, people make a community. Cupertino, as you all know, is one of the most diverse communities, cities in the world. Our diversity makes us a great place to live. It gives us wonderful places to eat, great festivals like Diwali, shows, wonderful dances of all different types. And for those of you who don't know, we have the best cricket team in the country now. So <laughs> there's a lot to that. Um, many of you, like me, probably moved to Cupertino because of its diversity. Some cities' diversity is, happens, and, it, and it's not a good thing. In Cupertino, it's a great thing. It, what, it's what draws people here. It's why we all live and want to be in Cupertino. It, 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 and it really gives us huge advantages. We're perhaps one of the best examples in the world of how different groups can make a community better, stronger, more fun, and more successful. I think Cupertino is a shining example for the rest of the world how everyone can and should live together. But I think we can do even better. Rather than it just happen and naturally occurring, I think we can also 
leverage that process more. We can advertise it, we can make it clear to the rest of the world what we're all about here in Cupertino. So I'd like to announce the Leveraging Ethnic Diversity Workshop, LED, tricky name. Like Once again, I, I needed Shelley's help for that acronym. But um, So this workshop is going to be a workshop put on later this year. And it's actually going to, so the question is, who's the best person to put this on? And it suddenly occurred to me that um, I used the uh, liaison for the Sister Cities last few years. And this, what better group than Sister City um, people? They already work with different diverse cultures. They understand the city. They understand a lot of different cultural things. So I'm here to say that, so we have three official sister cities right now, Toyokawa, Shinsu, and Bhubaneswa in India. And we have a, a new sister city that's, that's applying to become a sister city in the future in, in uh, China. And those four groups have all graciously agreed to come in and help run this workshop to see if there's some things we can do better. And, I, and I'm sure there are, and when I, when I ask each of them, they like to, you know, ran by me to, to jump in to help. It's just a very enthusiastic group of people. I really want to thank you guys. You should give yourselves a hand, your Sister City Church, for the wonderful work you've done. Speaking of giving people a hand, once again, I'd like to bring up my fellow council members. This time, I'm not going to make them do any tricks. Come on up. Um, the reason for this is, as I said earlier, and I'm going to repeat again, um, you know, one person doesn't make a community. One person does not make a city council. As you know, the mayorship changes. You guys need to come this way and in the light. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, elected officials love to be on camera. I don't know what. So I, I want to introduce my fellow council members once again. Vice Mayor Mahoney, Gilbert Wong. <laughs> council member Barry Chang. And, and, and I guess he's our newest council member, so you can't blame him yet. But, but soon, uh, Rod Sinks. <laughs> I'd also like to bring up, we have two direct reports to the, uh, to the, to the uh, City Council, as you don't know. One of them is the City Attorney, Carol Corrade. <laughs> who always tells me her goal is to never to be seen on camera, which is why I put her slide in here. <laughs> now she's going to see how she's going to try to hide behind me here. Um, and finally, we're going to bring up Dave Knapp, uh, City Manager. <laughs> So basically, Dave runs the city, and Carol tries to keep us all out of trouble. <laughs> um, finally, I want to thank all of the employees of the city. This is, there's, there's about 150 of them, but they'll never all get together for a picture, and so we need to twist arms on that. There's about half of them. Um, you guys are a wonderful group of people. There's a lot of them here. They've worked really hard. If you, if you like this presentation, you should thank them, because if it was just me, you saw my, my talk. So um, They've done a wonderful job in, under the leadership of Dave, and I want to thank them. I um, also want to thank the uh, Sheriff and Fire Department, who you met earlier, giving out some awards. A fantastic job, as we said earlier. And um, now this is where I get to blame the staff, because I've asked them for a list of everybody else I should thank, so it's not my fault if they're not here. <laughs> and, and, and also got John to do all the dignitaries, because I'm terrible at that. So a lot of our uh, volunteers in the city, the Audit Committee, Bicycle Pedestrian Committee, Fine Arts Commission, Housing Commission, Library Commission, Parks and Rec Commission, Planning Commission, Public Safety Commission, Teen Commission, the TIC, Cupertino Rotary and Chamber of Commerce, we're putting on this event today. Thank them. Or thank yourselves, I should say. Uh, Quota, Optimus Club, Quantis, Cupertino Lions, West Valley Community Services, Senior Center Volunteers, Historical Society, Organization of Special Needs Families, Block Leaders, School Volunteers, Friends of the Library, Citizens Corp, Northwest YMCA. <sighs> Got a lot of volunteers. I also want to thank our residents and our students who get involved in our city. Most important people to thank are the people who get involved, like everybody in this room. I want you to all give yourselves a big hand. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for coming, and thanks for putting up with me. It's a nice day. Thank <laughs> 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 you.